Welcome back everybody. Today we're working on this 2012 Honda CRV with the 2.4 and it has a loud noise when you start the car up at a cold start, especially when it's been sitting for over six hours. So uh, I asked you guys for help and you guys all helped me out. So I really appreciate you guys helping me out on this one. It was a little bit tough for me to figure it out. Um, I thought it might be the timing chain or the tensioner because I measured them out because there are issues with these timing chains and tensioners. So I measured out the chain, it was stretched out, measured out the plunger on the, on the uh, tensioner, and it was extended out. So I knew that the timing chain needed to be replaced. But unfortunately, I still had a slight noise when I started it up, and I asked you guys for help, and a lot of you guys gave me a lot of really good uh, you know, feedback. So thank you so much for that. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the VTC solenoid. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys the process of how to do that. It's very simple and uh, Well, it's not simple, but it's it's sim simple for me But again, I always tell you guys that hard is relative depending on your skill set this one You definitely do need to have a lot of experience a a mechanic for sure uh, This is something you do not want to mess with because there's a lot of things that you have to make sure that they're properly set Before you take it or put it back together or else you're gonna have some issues and a lot of it is very technical so again if you have the patience, you can definitely do it if you're a backyard mechanic, but just know that it's gonna take you a little bit of, ex uh, little bit of experience. I will also put a link in the description below to uh, the full directions to this entire process uh, and the procedures. It gives you the correct steps, what to do, and how to get all of this done without having to remove a whole bunch of other components. Also, I'm gonna put a link in the description below to all the tools that I use on this job and uh, you know anything else reference-wise down in the description below. Make sure you guys check that out. And pick, please pick up a hat or a shirt at automechanicclub.com, the mechanic hats, and uh, uh, check engine light slayers are over there and some shirts as well. It helps support the channel. So thanks so much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and get on this thing. I already went ahead and started on the job. I went ahead and started removing the valve cover, which I figured it was gonna be pretty easy, especially if, you, if you're doing this job, you, you already know how to do this. So I'm not too worried about showing you guys the process of how to do this. Uh, it's pretty simple, obviously. There's a whole bunch of bolts you have to remove. Let me set my flashlight down. So these bolts here, they come out, I'm sorry, these nuts. There's two bolts that go on the back uh, that hold the all this stuff onto the valve cover, uh, valve cover. So there's two t uh, 10 millimeters and I just use a socket and a ratchet. And then the spark plug coils, remove that. And then the, there's two nuts on the back here and here. And then one here and then one, two and three there. Uh, you remove those and then the valve cover can come off at that point. Yeah, you just fish it out, you pop it out and then we go ahead with the, con with the rest of the job. So I'll walk you guys through so I'll walk you guys through the process of doing this entire job. And uh, I'll show you guys the highlights mainly because uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, if you're doing a job this big, you already know what you're doing. So you don't really need specifics like remove this bolt with this tool for the most part. So I'll show you guys the tough parts, like the things that are a little bit more technical. I think that's where you guys will need the help, um, especially if you already know how to remove a valve cover. You know what I'm saying? And then like, I'll show you guys specifics when putting the valve cover back on. Like, hey, make sure you put silicone here. Because those, those are the things that you're going to need, are the very specific things that are cause you to have bigger issues down the line. So I want to make sure you guys are covered on that end. So let's go ahead and get started and let's get going. So the valve cover comes off, pop this bad boy out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the engine in top dead center and we're going to go ahead and uh, put a uh, pin inside the tensioner so we can get the tension off the chain and then we're gonna zip tie the camshaft to the chain and then we'll, we'll be able to remove all of the the cam uh, caps and then we'll, we'll be able to remove the camshaft and we'll go ahead and replace the VTC. So that, that's basically the procedure of it but obviously I'm gonna show you guys the specifics of it but that's basically what we're gonna do now. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and remove the tire so you can reach the camshaft, I'm sorry, the crankshaft, and we can uh, spin it and put everything top dead center. Okay, so we have everything ready to go and put everything in top dead center. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this cover. This is what covers the tensioner. And then if you look underneath here, uh, I already marked the top dead center lines. There's gonna be one mark at the end and then about three marks. This is the mark for top dead center. So we're gonna spin it until it matches with the mark on top on the timing chain cover. You can't see it from the bottom, you can only see it from the top. But uh, I'll spin this 
and then uh, we'll see it from the top and I'll show you guys that once I mark it and everything and then we're also going to remove this cover and then that's where once it's at the top dead center we'll be able to compress the tensioner and put the pin in it so it'll keep tension off of the chain to spin the crankshaft you need a 19 millimeter and just go ahead and turn it clockwise and then also before I forget there's also another set of marks right above the other marks so there's two marks right so there's these right here and then there's some over here these aren't the marks for, I don't know why they're there but these are the ones that are top dead center so we're all you know just know that there's two sets of marks the one that's closer to the bottom to the left are the ones that you're gonna want to mark mark everything up with and you'll know that they're the right ones because when you put it at top dead center right you put it at top dead center you'll be able to check on the camshafts and if the camshafts are not lined up then you know that those are the wrong marks that you're using so go ahead and use the ones on the left once you get it there go on top make sure that the camshafts are also lined up and then that's how you know those are the right ones now obviously if you have never started the motor like I, I already know this motor's a top dead center and it's fine because I've, uh, I've started the car up and I know that everything works properly so uh, it just makes that noise so I know that everything's a top dead center so as long as I leave everything as is and remove everything properly and put everything back in the correct spot then I should have no issue so long as I put everything in top dead center and I know where everything is does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the cover using a 10 millimeter. There it goes. Whenever you have a bolt that falls, let it fall and then just watch it. Because <laughs> these bad boys will bounce around. So if it falls, just like be like, oh, there it goes, boom. And then go grab it. Never take your eyes off the bolt, or you will lose it. Okay, got the cover off. Let me show you guys a tensioner. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but uh, this is what the tensioner will look like right there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, first things first is we want to go ahead and compress the timing chain tensioner, which is right here. The way you do that is this little tab here will retract up when you turn the crankshaft counterclockwise okay so you turn this counterclockwise and then this uh, plunger will go back in and then this little tab will move up and you'll be able to secure it using a pin okay um, pretty thin I think I'll, 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 fi I'll figure out the measurement and I'll put it on the screen right now for you folks so you guys know what size you'll need but uh, any pin will work and then you go ahead and just put the pin in when the piston retracts because when you turn it back when you turn the cr uh, crankshaft counterclockwise it'll push back on the piston plunger and you'll be able to sneak this in there and, and, and keep it from moving out There it goes. Just got it. There you go. A little bit more. Okay, so we got the pin in. Everything's good. Now we go ahead and turn the crankshaft and put it on top dead center. Okay, so again, there's the two marks on the camshaft. I will show a picture of what the hell I'm talking about, guys. So you guys should already be keeping up with everything. Uh, I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about how to make sure that you guys understand what the heck I'm talking about. But um, in between here, there's the two marks. You guys will see the picture on the screen right now. Those two marks have to be lined up. Unfortunately for me, this one is not lined up perfectly. So what I have to do is just spin the camshaft, the crankshaft just a little bit to mark, make sure those lines are marked up. I can't, you, I can't really see the mark from the top uh, on the crankshaft from, with the camera. I can see it, like, I can sneak in there and see it, you know, with my eyes, but the camera, I just, unfortunately, I can't. Uh, but just know that that mark on the bottom has to be lined up, and these marks have to be lined up. And there's also arrows on the camshafts themselves. 
that show you like these are supposed to be up but most importantly these two lines have to be lined up okay so now that we have everything lined up now we're going to go ahead and make sure that the camshafts are all marked up before we, we remove anything the way I like to do that is to take a marker this one is uh, oil resistant but I like to also clean off the marks that I'm or the locations where I'm going to mark everything so I use a little bit of brake clean and I spray it on a rag or a paper towel and then I mark everything up so the marks that go from the uh, camshaft to the sprocket links I'm sorry to the ch chain links I mark those and then I mark obviously the middle where the sprockets are uh, lined up and then I have everything marked up in case anything does move I know where everything was originally and then I can put everything back together I also like to make a few other marks that aren't um, stock so like I'll mark here on the top and then I'll mark like over here on the side just so I can have a reference you know what I mean so I'll mark two locations on the sprocket and then two locations on the second sprocket and I'll have everything marked up so we'll do uh, we'll do one here make sure that is marked up my pen freaking works and then so I'll, I'll mark the tooth on the sprocket and then the two links that that the that the mark is in between you know what I'm saying so the two links and then there's a little little mark in between the uh, on the tooth of the sprocket so I'll just do that just for reference and then I'll do it again another another uh, side of the chain and uh, the sprocket as well just to keep everything just to make sure that in case one of the marks does like for some reason get uh, erased which happens sometimes because you'll spray it down with brake clean or oil get in there and it's not really marked up and you'll be like man where the hell was how, how was this like where did everything go you know what I'm saying so it's a good idea just to mark two locations just in case you do have any issues with uh, with it moving and it gives you better reference. It just makes me feel better too. So you never know, man. I mean, I used to do Cobra motors on uh, Fords, and those things don't have any marks, man. They have you. They give you no direction. So you're pretty much on your own. So this is where I learned that. I learned it from doing it on a uh, Cobra motors. It sucked. Okay. So now that we have everything marked, we're gonna go ahead and zip tie the chain to the sprocket. Okay, so next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, zip tie the chain sprocket to the chain itself. And you go through the hole on the sprocket and over the chain. Make sure that that's nice and tight so that uh, nothing falls off because we're going to go ahead and remove the tensioner. Now that we got everything set up over here, we can go to the next step, which is going ahead and removing the camshaft uh, holders. So we're going to go ahead and remove the caps, the caps that hold the camshafts down. We want to go ahead and remove them in sequence, the way that they're supposed to be put back on. And the way you do that is uh, you go from the middle out. So it'll be one, two, three, four. And then again, I also will put a link in the description to the sequence um, so you guys have it. And I'll put a picture of it here on the screen so you guys know what the hell I'm pointing at. Uh, four and then it's five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then it's thirteen all the way back here then it's fourteen fifteen sixteen and then uh, then it's uh, seventeen all the way up over here uh, eighteen nineteen 20 so remove them in that order and again i'll put a picture right here so you guys have it and you guys know what the heck i'm talking about so we're going to go ahead and remove those and then remove the camshaft as well and before you go ahead and remove the cam uh, holders we're going to go ahead and remove each bolt in sequence 
two turns at a time. So if this is the first one, we remove it, we give it two turns off, then go to the next one, two turns, two turns, and then when you do them all, you go back to the first one, another two turns, another two turns, another two turns, and you do that so that everything comes off nice and even. You never want to remove one and then have this side all lopsided because it'll, it'll mess things up. So go ahead and remove it in sequence, two turns at a time. Turn it twice, one, two, then the next one. So that's one, and it's two over here. So it's one, two, two turns at a time. If you do want to mark it, if you want to get crazy with it, ladies and gentlemen, you go ahead and, and mark which end is which. So for example, we'll say this is uh, the starting point here, you know? So you'll turn it one and then two. If you want to get super technical with it, if you're scared, you know what I'm saying? But just, just, just two turns. I mean, don't, you know, just follow it. One, that's one turn. And then two, boom, okay. Okay, so now that we have everything loose, I'm still going in sequence in order just to make sure, but everything's pretty much loose now. So you can go ahead and remove everything, remove the five uh, cam holders, put them in, keep them in order, do not mess this up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's five of them, keep them in order, put them aside, put them in a nice clean area that's safe, that aren't gonna get tipped over, aren't gonna, Nobody's gonna mess with them. Put them aside, put all the bolts in the same location, and then we're, we'll, be able to, we'll be able to go ahead and tip up the camshaft and sneak it out off the chain and then get it out of the way with the help of somebody. If for some reason you guys are having trouble getting them off, what I like to do is I like to pull the bolts off until I can see a little bit of the thread and I just squeeze them gently and I just kind of wiggle it back and forth and it'll pop out. Nice and gentle, nothing crazy. They're all pretty much off. This one's still stuck. So what I'll do is I'll go on the side that's stuck. Not stuck. And just wiggle it back and forth. Boom. That's how you pop them out. One at a time. Okay, now that we have uh, everything off, we can go ahead and uh, lift up the camshaft, tilt it out, and be able to remove it from the chain. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we got the old cam phaser off. Um, pretty much just have somebody hold it uh, from here with the 15, 16 millimeter uh, uh, wrench, and then go ahead and remove the bolt, which is 17 millimeter, and uh, you could use a gun to remove it, not a big deal, or an air, air gun. But uh, I recommend doing it like the directions say, which is somebody hold it, you twist it off with the breaker bar. Uh, now that we got it off, <clears throat> we got the new actuator in the shop. And then you, the only thing that you'll notice that are different between these two with the old one and the new one is that one of them is locked and one of them is unlocked. Now the new ones are gonna come unlocked. So when that you put it on the camshaft, you turn it and then it locks itself. But you can see that the Though, if you use for some reason a used part or it comes locked, there's a procedure for you to unlock it, which is you put it on, you uh, tighten it down, finger tight, and then you, you plug up these holes, and then you put compressed air through this hole, and then it'll, it'll twist it out uh, and it'll unlock it. Now, I don't have to do that because a new one comes uh, unlocked for me, and I'll be able to do all this once it's already on, and I don't have to do that pr procedure. But just know that if you do have to do that, for whatever reason, you're gonna have to go through that process. I'm not gonna go through that because I don't have to. So just understand that you wanna have it unlocked like it is here, okay? This little tab is over. You can see that this one is over this way. That's because it's locked, okay? <clears throat> All right guys, go ahead and put on the phaser. Put a little bit of oil on the threads here on the bolt. Couple, uh, couple drops there, nothing too excessive, just enough. A little bit of oil on there. Go ahead and install it finger tight. Just run it down with your fingers so you don't have any issues. Okay, then we go ahead and torque it once it's all the way on. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I have the cam uh, torqued down. It's supposed to be torqued at 83 foot-pounds. 83 foot-pounds, and the way you tighten it down is you have somebody hold it here with the 15 16 wrench, hold it, and then you torque it down. So this is a two-man job here. Make sure that you don't twist this, okay? Because this is, remember, it's supposed to be unlocked when you install it. So as you get it out of the box, unlocked, you put it on, you tighten it down, turn the nut down, the bolt down by hand, then you torque it down to 83 foot pounds. Once that's already torqued and you have it in your hand, then you grab the outside sprocket and you turn it clockwise and it'll click into place and it should look like that. The little divot inside, okay, that should be locked and then you won't be able to move it anymore. Okay, that's what I meant by when you, if this thing comes locked, you're going to have to tie up this hole and then you're supposed to put compressed air through this one and it's supposed to unlock it. Okay, but I, I didn't have to do that, so we're good to go. But when you tighten it all, when you torque it all down, twist it up and that should give you the right position for everything. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, now that we have everything ready to go, uh, I, I went ahead, give me one second, let me put this down. I went ahead and uh, lifted the cam up and I had somebody help me get the chain out of the way. So I popped it out. I had to put this, uh, this cap on so that the cam wasn't moving too much on this end. So um, now I'm gonna have somebody else help me remove this, cut the wire tie while they hold this and then sneak in the cam, lay it down, torque, uh, put all the caps on, make sure that uh, everything's lined up. Then I'll go ahead and torque everything up and keep going with the job and put everything back together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I got the new cam phaser, uh, I'm sorry, the new actuator on. Uh, like I said before, I marked this side and this side and everything lined up there. I had my uh, assistant come and help me hold the chain up while I fished in the, the cam. One little tip was that I had to lift up the, the exhaust side as well, the exhaust cam. I lifted it up just a little bit to get a little more slack on the chain. Then my assistant helped me kind of, I put the cam in and they, they fed the chain over the gear and then they told me, okay, twist it a little bit and then I moved it and then we got everything lined up and that's when I set everything down and I, I'm, I, have, I have a holder holding it down from the middle. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of them and then torque everything down and then tighten everything down in sequence. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to take a little bit of oil, put a little bit of oil on the cap here. Just a tiny bit and then I'll put a little bit of oil on all the journals on the cam so that they're lubricated when um, I start up the car again just a smidge drop a uh, couple drops on the cam journals so that everything is nice and lubricated when uh, the car starts back up not totally necessary but it's something that I like to do just to make sure that nothing is dry when we uh, go ahead and install everything again also everything should have you should have taken these off and put them exactly set them down exactly how you took them off, but just in case they are numbered and they are they have an arrow in which way they should point, the arrow should point for, to, towards the front of the engine. The front of the engine is uh, where the crankshaft is. Okay guys, so when we're tightening everything down, I like to do it nice and slow, uh, you know, to get the cam kind of like all nice and even. So you start off from the middle and then you go to the, to the outside, so one, one, two, two. So same thing, just run them down, don't, don't tighten them down or anything, just run them snug. Once they're all nice and down and snug, that's when we go ahead and start torquing everything down. These big ones are going to be at 16 foot-pounds. All the bolts are going to be at 16 foot-pounds or 22 newton meters, okay? Okay, now that we got everything ready to go, everything's snug, so we're going to go ahead and start torquing everything down. So in the same sequence, at 16 foot-pounds. Click.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, last thing we got to do is obviously put the valve cover back on. After you spin it twice and you make sure that all the lines are still marked up and everything's in correct order, look inside the timing chain uh, guides and make sure that the timing chain is writing on the guides properly. If it's not, probably fell off and you're going to have to take off the timing chain cover and then put it on in the correct position. But it probably will be okay, especially if everything went smooth. Last thing after that, you got to put the cover back on of the tensioner. I like to use a wire wheel uh, and then just take off all the old gasket material. Take a razor blade to uh, the timing chain cover and then take off all the old stuff. Put a little bit of a gasket maker on here. Put it on. Wait 30 minutes before you top off any fluid uh, oil if you did put any oil and then go ahead and start the car up. It, the car should have been sitting for about six hours already so it's okay to start it up and then retest everything. So you should be okay. Uh, but that's basically it. That's basically it. Uh, it was a fun process. Everything went pretty smooth. The last thing I had to do is make sure it starts up and having no issues. So long as you guys didn't mess anything up, it should be fine. Everything was pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Uh, as long as all the marks are in the correct spaces, uh, in the correct spots, you shouldn't have any real issues. When you start up the car, you shouldn't have that noise anymore. Everything should be good and ready to go. But if, you, if you're wondering, go ahead and start it up. Turn off the car, let it sit for six hours, let the oil drain out, and then go ahead and start it up again, and you shouldn't have any more problems, any more noises anyways. Uh, but anyways, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you guys leave me a comment and let me know what you guys like about the video. Also, make sure you guys check out automechanicclub.com and pick up your shirts and your hats. We got the mechanic hats. We got uh, Check Engine Light Slayer hats over there. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it informational. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Okay. Clear? Beautiful? They're a little round. And they move the little square. Tool time! <laughs>